And for more on these travel trends, I'm joined by Lindsay Roche, a travel and hospitality analyst at Morning Consult. Uh, good to see you. This is always a fun topic because we, I think, are basically in the middle because I, I have some colleagues that just got back from spring break and I have others getting ready to go on it. And one thing that um, is being echoed by everybody is they cannot believe how expensive hotels are. They can't believe how much renting a car is. And the list goes on. Um, we haven't clearly learned anything from last year other than we're going to spend more money. I, I'm guessing your answer is this is here to stay, unfortunately. For the time being, yes. I think, you know, the fact that people are ready and willing to travel again is just driving up demand. It's driving up prices as a result. And so it's something that's probably not going to change anytime soon. That being said, people are trying to find ways to travel and save money while they're doing it. So doing a lot of price comparing, using points or miles or rewards to book, uh, because people don't want to cancel their plans. We've spent a few years having to do that, and now they're just ready to get back out there again. So I, I, I mean, he, here's my take. People say they care about the price, but I I'm not sure I buy they do care, but because almost every person that I've spoken to and across all different, you know, uh, economic classes, we all want to save money. But at the end of the day, that experience in traveling, wherever it is that you're going, whether it's to Disneyland or to New York City or Vegas, they're going to pay whatever it takes to keep the kids or whoever you're going with happy. I mean, we've learned one thing from the pandemic is these experiences do matter. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. And I think our data shows the same. You know, one of the things I saw in our spring break data was that the share of adults in the U.S. who said that they were planning on traveling during the spring break period was pretty similar this year to what we saw last year. But the types of trips they were taking were different. So international trips, longer trips, trips to places that they had never been before. And so I think it really does show that people are valuing those experiences and, you know, willing to willing to pay for them. And, and one of the things that we saw last year as we were coming out of COVID was airlines were trying to ramp up, right? Hotels were trying to get employees back to work. Airlines were trying to get more pilots and fly attendants. Are, are we much better off today? I would say we're better than we are or we were last year, although there was some news that came out today that some flight routes have been canceled over the summer into major cities like New York and D.C., not due to airline shortages, but due to air traffic control shortage. So something that is not in the control of the airlines, but of course will further impact pricing and, and availability, um, given the fact that there are just you know less flights to take. Now airlines are saying that they're going to use bigger aircraft to, to, um, to accommodate accommodate more people, um, but it's still causing some issues. So I'd say we're, we're not back from a capacity perspective to where we were pre-pandemic, but the demand is certainly I, I, I can warn everybody that travel on a plane has not been fun. Almost every flight that I've been on recently has been nearly 100% full, and, and I really don't know why. Um, there was another story that was floating around um, regarding Florida. And we all know Florida is a big destination for spring breakers um, and, and including sort of families because of Orlando and Disney World and Universal Studios. But there was an article that came out that sort of diswelcomed spring breakers to Florida. And I'm talking about the party goers, the, the people significantly younger than, than, than us, I would think, um, that are maybe not big spenders, but big partiers. And is there a reason why Florida may be pushing back on those tourists? You know, I'm not sure. I can't really speak to what the motivation was behind that, but I would imagine that Florida is not trying to brand itself as a destination to simply go, you know, for college kids to go party. For them, they really want to highlight the family-friendly aspects of Florida, the theme parks, but also, you know, the beaches and other areas that families really tend to flock to. And of course, if you think about an experience as a family, it might be tainted a little bit if you're on a beach side by side with um, partying college students. So, um, you know, maybe they're trying to get away from that a little bit. Although, like I said, I, I can't speak to. Uh, exactly <laughs> it, it just <laughs> it just doesn't seem like a vacation to stand in line for three hours and be on a packed beach uh, with wall to wall people. But that's that's just me. Um, one thing that has always been brought up is, well, how do we save money? And there's there's little fees that bug us, right, whether it's baggage fees or it's it's this fee or that fee and hotels 
are starting to charge these um, destination fees, if you will. So you go to D.C. or you go to New York and you look at your bill and there's this extra $25 or $50 charge that says, well, it's a destination fee. And all these hotels are on it, but almost every single consumer dislikes it very, very much. Is there any recourse to any of these extra fees? Well, that's certainly something that the Biden administration is trying to address in legislation, the idea of quote-unquote junk fees, um, fees that are kind of not clear when you're initially uh, booking whatever uh, airfare or a hotel accommodation that you are. So it's something that is working its way through the government. One thing I will say is that, you know, it's something that people balked at long ago on airfare, you know, paying for checked baggage, and now it's become a little bit more normalized. Um, and people are looking for ways to save money where they can kind of unbundle some of the things that might they might traditionally get. So, you know, people may balk at it at the moment. It may become more normalized in the future. And the, the travel brands make a lot of money from those kind of amenities and ancillaries. So um, it remains to be seen what happens, but it's something that the government is definitely addressing. And Lindsay, I have to quickly ask you, um, you know, for our friends in the control room, like our producer Nanuka, um, we, we travel quite a bit here in, in this industry. Are there specific days of the week that we can travel that would help save money or places we can go to that are on the sort of offbeaten track? You know, it used to be the case that there were certain days of the week where you could save or times of the year when you could save, but that's changed a lot given flexible working that was brought about by the pandemic. People have more flexible schedules, and so they're not uh, confined to flying, say, on a Friday to Sunday schedule. And so it's really made it so the demand has kind of spread out throughout the week, and it's normalized the, the prices a little bit throughout the week where, you know, you used to be able to get some cheaper rates if you were to fly, say, midweek or in the middle of a work. Day. So I would say the best bet at the moment is to just set an alert, um, look for the flights you want, watch. Uh, there's a lot of websites out there that will help you kind of predict whether those rates are going to come up or come down. Um, and watch, 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 and then book when it says <laughs> you should be ready to book. Watch, watch, watch. Uh, Lindsay, appreciate the travel tips. Uh, thank you very much from Morning Consult.